this is a 22 year old car. Yeah. So there's there's been more refinement in a lot of things in automobiles, but this has pretty much everything you need and nothing you don't. No like vibrating seats, no lane sensor warnings, no backup camera. It has super functional, uh, you know, air conditioning and heating. It does have GPS. I wouldn't trust that GPS <laughs> as far as I can no. throw it. But uh, you know, it's comfortable. I have a tendency, or I think a lot of people have a tendency when they think of all their cars is thinking that they're obsolete, but there hasn't really been much change uh, in the realm of it's a great car that drives well. The awesome thing about this car is that you have all the luxuries that you need to have a comfortable ride, but you don't have any of the technical or electronic support gadgets that take the ride out of your hands. And, uh, you know, shake you awake. Okay, so we talk a lot between the three of us about cars that we can't sell, but we did sell one of these before and the three of us had to buy it back. Yes. So yeah. what's special about this car, Dad, and what, what drove us to all seek one out many years later, and all of us to agree on a specific car that we all wanted to buy. Well, that's the, that's the hard thing, is for all of us to just say, look, this is a car that we want in the collection. And I thought in 2001, when I saw the 2002 coming, that with the bangle butt and the crazy you know, headlights and stuff, I just thought, wow, this is the last of the great sedans. So this is a and BMW 740. 740. This E38. one is 2000, but you had a 2001, which was when the E38s ended production. Correct. And it was probably one of the last ones built because I, I ordered it and waited for it. And um, just absolutely think that, you know, we could have gotten the long, uh, you know, the long wheelbase, but the short wheelbase is like the perfect proportions for the rear door, the front door. Uh, and I just thought it was just so handsome. And yeah, and this is the car that established kind of the three-way check system of what car could leave the collection. And uh, I remember the day when uh, your original 740 uh, Sporty Shorty was sold. I think Nick and I, I don't know, I don't remember crying, uh, but I remember being very upset. And from there, Nick and I went through all of his cars and essentially marked the ones that could not leave your collection without permission first. Well, that car did go to a Tyrrell Formula One car, which was even prettier than this, but. Right. But, but again, for all of us <laughs> to agree, I think we've had this working top 25 list for years and we all have very divergent cars on there, but it still seems to come back to this 740i. And this one we bought Believe it or not, I'm bringing a trailer. We did. But it's one that we were patient on. We were looking forever, right? Because there's a million we of the long been. wheelbase ones. There's not a lot that are triple black, M parallel, M sport package, sporty shorties. Right. A lot of them have these gray interiors, which I literally can't stand gray for an interior. It's just like someone threw up. That's what, your, you know, a lot you know, of doctors inside. gray. What? Yeah, because they want to figure out where the blood that came off their scrubs <laughs> is so they can clean it up when they get home. Well, Gray's uh, coming back. The mafia guys bought the black ones because they didn't care where the blood was. It was everywhere. Yeah. Well, what, what this car did for me is taking you to school in it. And back then, I mean, what cars would you buy? You'd buy a Crown Vic or you could get a 740i, <laughs> right? <laughs> One of the two, two it's either German, there. <laughs> German or American. This is about the same size as a Crown Vic. We, we do own a Crown Vic now. Yeah, we so do, we do <laughs> own a Crown Vic, unfortunately. Then that's another car that we can never sell. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, so I, I absolutely love the design of this. I thought the size was perfect. I could fit four kids in it, going to school. Uh, I had a killer stereo and we obviously played queen on the way there and uh, turned up in that little you know, riff, I want to break free. Does that sound That's about close. Right? You pretty much like timed it up for Ding like when you were dropping us off. Like that pretty was much. like, yeah, pretty much. 
That um, or some Peter Gabriel or Genesis song that just, yeah. you know, really, it's great stereo for the time. I don't know if somebody well, blew out the speakers now, but yeah. But I just thought it was just a classic design at the right proportions. And I didn't tell you I was selling it. And then I let it go for a Turo Formula One car uh, with some cash. And um, so always regretted selling it because my dad had a seven series that I ordered it in Germany. It was a black market car. It came in like really cheap and I ordered all these little special things that he told me not to order, you know, like the sports steering wheel, sports suspension. Uh, he said he wanted like a 725. I got him the 735 I with the big valve head and, and anyways. So I was still in the family. It's still in the family, believe it yeah. or not. Yeah. Our product developer, Jeff, uh, bought that from you know, one of our long-term associates yeah. who had bought it from my grandfather for a dollar. For a dollar. <laughs> my dad sold it to him for a dollar. I had no idea what other deal they were cutting, but um, yeah. So unfortunately, Jeff didn't get it back for a dollar. Yeah. No, but he... <laughs> I overheard that, that, the attempted negotiation between you and the other party where you wanted to give him two dollars, double his yeah, money. Yeah, well, he would have doubled his <laughs> money for two, two bucks. But yeah. That car had some needs as well, but it's it's back in the family as well. Well, it never left the family. So I remember, you know, going to school in this car. Very vividly remember a lot of Queen greatest hits, Volume One and Two. I remember kind of working my way through the trust of washing a car. Like when I say I was wheel boy, I was cleaning M Parallels, which are quite simple wheels to clean, but those were the ones that were bright silver before I could touch the black paint. And I remember the first time I washed this car, I missed like half the door. Yeah. And you know, that was just like, no, no, <laughs> go back to work. And, uh, but yeah, that, I mean, this was a car that was around. This is the car that invented the uh, three finger uh, detail mitt, by okay. the way, just so you could get in between all the little parallel spots. There you go. I think there's, it, it, it's kind of strange to think about because when I look at, uh, you know, as a, seller of classic and collectible cars. Um, this might be a car that I would recommend to people as something that would surprise you or uh, you know, just an enjoyable driving experience, but it's not something that I think you would find on anyone's top 10, top 25 list. Uh, I think Nick said that it was on our top 25 and it's just funny to me how much emotion is tied into that ranking for this car. And, I, you know, I've driven it around for a couple of weeks and it's been a very emotional experience for me just looking at the same, you know, the, the orange 8-bit font on the radio, <laughs> the, the lights that have a green backlight, um, or the, sorry, the buttons with a green backlight and just the smell of the car, the way yeah. it sounds, it's, it's, it was incredibly sentimental and I found myself describing all these things to my wife who told me to uh, go back to work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I love driving the car. I just thought it had just, you know, it didn't have like gobs of power, like a 500E, but it wasn't the price of a 500E at the time either. And, um, you know, it's got a great V8 in it. This is the first car I did 100 miles an hour in. I remember the exact to me. I was I, just <laughs> describing it to a guy in our call center about the moment. I don't think I That's ever the did difference between miles. he and I. Yeah. So, like, there's all these stories of, sorry, you know, I slipped the clutch, I burned yeah. it. You know, little little, little <laughs> tidbits. tidbits coming through of seeing Nick doing a burnout in your car somewhere. And, you know, I think I went the I, I always did the opposite of what he did. I just learned I know. from yeah. experience. Yeah. Like, and you had a hey, lot of lessons. Hey, that's not, <laughs> you get in trouble when you do that action. So I'll do this one. See, see but they made 9,000 of these, right? The shorty sporties. Yeah. yeah. So. so there's plenty of them out there. Um, there's, I, I still think black on black just looks like a, nice car in a tuxedo. I don't think I could do a gray interior. They had other like saddle interiors or, you know, the pan. There's a lot of handsome combinations. And then, you know, think of the movies. James Bond. Transport on black. Transport right? as well, it's a great one. But if, correct me if I'm wrong, we, in the transport it didn't have a manual. Yeah, I think uh, the Euro ones had manuals, which yeah. of course, which well, it would be a great one to pick like up. Like a 728 manual, something yeah. like that. I don't think they had a, 740. Regardless, as kids, I mean, those movies were, I mean, those were the popular movies of the day. This car was 
Yeah, I'm kind sorry of a about just introducing you to James Bond movies too. That's all right. I kind of polluted everything that we ever knew about cars. Well, it's here, and we're all going to enjoy it. And it's clear that the money is worth it. So totally. May not be everybody's top rarest car, but for us, it's special.